You are welcome to this service for Upper Cull. This week led from Strachur. Recent weeks have been read from Loch Goylehead. Strachur is the next stage westwards from Loch Goylehead on the Cull Way. Both churches have medieval monuments built into them. Their antiquity is a constant reminder that God has inspired, does inspire and will inspire faithful lives. So today we begin with a prayer which speaks to that and makes a connection between our worship now and the worship of the saints who have taken the pilgrim way before us. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Living God, before whom is seen in vision a great multitude that none can count, from every nation, from all peoples and languages, we with them joyfully declare that salvation is of thee and of the Lamb, singing in our hearts, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honour and power and might be to our God for ever and ever. Often, much too often, Lord, we think too much of me and too little of us. We pretend to an independence and self-sufficiency which is quite unreal. We are willfully blind to how much we have inherited and to how much we depend on others. We refuse to recognise that we are quite involved in damaging behaviour in the group in which we live and pretend to ourselves that it has nothing to do with us. So. We are grateful for this time quietly to get real, to be honest with thee about our individual and our shared faults and flaws. And we are grateful that even as we acknowledge them, we will be graciously released to opportunities for freshness of hope, of vision and action, renewed in our participation in the true humanity of Jesus our friend and brother. Stir up, O Lord, the wills of thy faithful people, that richly bearing the fruit of good works, we may by thee be richly rewarded through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigning with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Hear the word of God from the Old Testament, from the book of the prophet Ezekiel, from the beginning of the 33rd chapter, Ezekiel chapter 33 at verse 1. The word of the Lord came to me. O mortal, speak to your people and say to them, If I bring the sword upon the land, and the people of the land take one of their number as their sentinel, and if the sentinel sees the sword coming upon the land and blows the trumpet and warns the people, then if anyone who hear the sound of the trumpet do not take warning and the sword comes and takes them away, their blood shall be upon their own heads. They heard the sound of the trumpet and did not take warning their blood shall be upon themselves. But if they had taken warning, they would have saved their lives. But if the sentinel sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet so that the people are not warned and the sword comes and takes any of them, they are taken away in their iniquity. But their blood I will require at the sentinel's hand. So you, mortal, I have made a sentinel for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked ones, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but their blood I will require at your hand. 
But if you warn the wicked to turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but you will have saved your life. Now you, mortal, say to the house of Israel, Thus have you said, Our transgressions and our sins weigh upon us, and we waste away because of them. How then shall we live? Say to them, As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but the wicked turn from their ways and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways, for why should you die? In the 119th Psalm Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I will observe it to the end. Give me understanding that I may keep your law and observe it with my whole heart. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Turn my heart to your decrees and not to selfish gain. Turn my eyes from looking at vanities. Give me life in your ways. Confirm to your servant your promise, which is for those in awe of you. Turn away the disgrace that I dread, for your ordinances are good. See, I have longed for your precepts. In your righteousness, give me life. Amen. Human beings have been described as a storytelling species. Unsurprisingly, therefore, although we are well accustomed to Jesus as the teller of stories of parables, he was not the first to tell such stories. Nor was he the first to pose questions by these stories which he told. The prophets had done so before him. He stood in their tradition. Ezekiel was essentially telling a story, offering a parable and posing a question about responsibility. A watch was set at the two gates of the city to warn of any threat or danger. When the enemy came, the watch at one gate sounded the alarm, but the populace in that quarter paid no heed to the warning carried on in their self-absorbed and self-seeking ways and did not take the opportunity to save their own lives. The enemy entered at that gate and set about sacking the city. The watch at the second gate, seeking to save his own life, failed to sound the alarm and fled. People carried on, absorbed in the commerce of their everyday lives. The enemy entered at that gate too and set about sacking the city. Who bore responsibility for the sacking of the city? What is our answer? We are the watchmen and the citizens of the city. We are the watch and the citizens of the city of God. We are here to look out for others. We are here both to heed and to speak the prophetic word. We turn to the New Testament and read from St Paul's letter to the church in Rome in the 13th chapter and beginning at the 8th verse. Romans chapter 8 and verse 13. Listen again for the word of the Lord. Owe no one anything 
except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not cover, and any other commandments are summed up in this word, love your neighbour as yourself. Love does no wrong to neighbour, therefore love is fulfilling the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep, for salvation is nearer as now and when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armour of light. Amen. It has sometimes been suggested that it was Paul who created the Christian religion as we know it because of the way that his message differed from that of Jesus. This is one of the passages in his letters which, on the contrary, suggest that he can be found on the same wavelength as Jesus. It is hard to miss the connection with one of Jesus' most famous parables, one brilliantly passed on by Luke. The young man asks what he needs to do if he is to live. Jesus responds by asking him, what is written? He answered, love God and your neighbour as yourself. When Jesus said, you've got it, the young man asked a second question, who is my neighbour? And it is at that point that Jesus tells his story, beginning, a certain man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. You will recall that the traveller was mugged and robbed. Two clerical types saw him on their journeys and did nothing to help. A despised outsider, one against whom most had a strong prejudice, a Samaritan found him, gave him first aid and paid for him to stay in an inn while he recuperated. Jesus concludes by asking the question which his story poses and answers. Who was neighbour to the man who was mugged? Just as Jesus stood in the tradition of the prophets, a profoundly challenging tradition. So too Paul stands in a clear line of descent from Jesus' message. The word to look out for others, to live by loving, is always challenging. Hear the Gospel of the Lord, reading from the 18th chapter of St Matthew's Gospel and beginning at the 18th verse. Matthew chapter 18 at verse 18. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Amen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks and praise be to God.
just a little earlier in his gospel, Matthew was telling us that it was Peter to whom Jesus individually said, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Now, the word is addressed to the faithful in general, and so is inclusive of Peter, but not just on his own. For it applies not to people in isolation, but to people in their coming together. It is in their togetherness that they will know the Father's graciousness. Again, it is neighbourliness and godliness coinciding. Genuine togetherness in love. In love, we are all, both the night watch and the citizens of the kingdom of God, pointing to the light of God's dawn. We share the faith of the Church Universal. I believe, I believe in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven, heaven and earth, and, and in Jesus Christ, Christ, his only, only Son, Son our Lord, Lord, who was conceived, conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of Light, we offer our prayers for thy church. May her life radiate glimmers of dawn, especially where clouds gather. May she have a strong sense of her unity in Christ, believing that that unity spans the globe, so living it that the world can see a practised proclamation of word and action that humanity belongs together and in mutual regard. May she have the strength to live sacrificially for others. Hear us, O Prince of Peace, for rulers and governors throughout the world. Everywhere they have responsibility for the well-being of their people amid pandemic. Grant them compassion and steadiness of purpose. May they have the wisdom and grace to listen to those with more knowledge than themselves. We remember those who live in places where the powerful maintain their power by engendering fear. We remember those who seek to live with grace and love in circumstances where others believe that fomenting division and aggression is to their advantage. We remember those in the Middle East and elsewhere who live in circumstances of hot war and economic war with no end in sight. We remember those for whom justice seems afar off. We share as a community of individuals and its individuals in community, for we have been so made. The wealth of our shared prayer is realised in what each one quietly brings. Therefore, in this quiet space, we offer prayers. For young people, whose knowledge and understanding is expanding to their enrichment and excitement. And for older people, whose mental faculties are waning.
for those who are delighted by embracing new members in their family and community, and for those who are experiencing loss from within the circle of family and friends. For all whom we now name our picture, And now we gather up all our prayers in the prayer that Jesus teaches. Our Father, Father which art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever. Amen. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.